what you expect from the man and what he does. And, and so this fight has become an anti-climax primarily because of what happened in the first fight because that was not our expectation and that made it more dramatic. This is not our expectation in terms of the style, uh, but it's a hard act to follow. Hector Camacho losing his first fight in 12 years. Some people are uh, voting with their feet here. It is to say that uh, a handful of spectators are beginning to walk out. And even Lou Duba is quiet. <laughs> well, I think you have to give a lot of credit to Jones. Yep, and Emmanuel Stewart. Another solid left hand by Whitaker, and Jones, as Manuel Stewart pointed out between rounds, is able to walk through it. Where's that right hand? Where's that hook? Where's that hook? Yes, yes. Where's that hook? You know, this speaks of a prize fighter's professionalism that, that, that he could come in here against an outstanding uh, young champion and stand there and hustle away. Uh, now through the best part of 11 rounds. Maybe studying computer sciences, but uh, he's got some flesh and bone and, and other stuff inside him that is uh, driving him like this. Some stomach. And in the first 11th round of his career, Anthony Jones looked much the same as he did in the first 10 yeah, rounds of this assignment with Fernell Whitaker. All right, now look, this round now, they gave him a lot of jabs to the body. You understand? Right. Yeah. You jab him in the body. Oh, in here, in here. Because he is dying. You understand? Right. Uh -huh. Keep your composure. Don't let him. Uh, you see how, uh, how much better he was when you didn't let him. Yeah, yeah. Just body pivot, okay? Everything hard. Body pivot. Body pivot. Stay in there close this round. All the way on it. And putting everything on the shots. You understand? Yeah. Body pivot. 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 Get out, this is it. Try, try to get him out of it with something short. First yourself. Let's go. Stay in close. You know, Jim, I've often said that, that when the crowd wants blood, what blood really means is drama. Uh, they want to see the tide of a fight go this way and that way. They want to see people exhibit uh, not only their skills, but uh, everything you bring to a demanding game like this. And Obviously, there wasn't any red blood in that first fight, but it was filled with drama. It was back and forth. It did, uh, the tides did change. Uh, the man who uh, was knocked down got up and, uh, and went on and kept pressing the fight and won it. And, uh, and, and that's why people responded to it, quite aside from the personalities of Haugen and Camacho, which are interesting enough. But in this fight, for whatever reason, it, it's sort of bloodless. But again, it's because it's following uh, a really tremendous upset. Seems to me we had an upset almost as big as this or bigger than that uh, 
last February, Jim. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. We have seen some unusual things. There was a question in Whitaker's corner between rounds as to whether he had hurt the hand. Lou Duba mentioned it. February has been the, the coolest month for Mike Tyson, considered invincible, and Hector Camacho. Unbeaten fighters taking unexpected losses in consecutive Februarys on HBO. Well, barring a monumental reversal of expectation by the Vegas judges here, <laughs> Bernal Whitaker is going to have another defense of his lightweight championship in a unanimous decision over Anthony Jones in a bout which will not be remembered much as it comes in the aftermath of the stunning upset of Hector Camacho by Greg Haugen. But as you pointed out at the beginning of the fight, the question now will be, with Camacho temporarily at least out of the picture, where does Whitaker go from here? Will he stay at 135 pounds, continuing to try to pick off opponents in his own weight class, or will he consider Chavez at 140 pounds? Obviously, the money will be in a Chavez fight. Whitaker with a final burst, the good stunning for a knockout. For the good fighters, they go where the money is. Hearns, Leonard moved up and down from well away the light heavyweight, and I don't think 140 pounds is uh, any hard obstacle for this man. Is Whitaker ready for Chavez? Absolutely. Uh, I'd be happy right. to see Whitaker or Taylor fighting Chavez. It's not going to be Taylor right away because he has a mandatory well away uh, defense. It very well might be Whitaker. And we'll ask him about it when we get into the ring. Who would you favor in that bout? Well, I can't. How do you, how do you go against... Uh, Chavez, who's about 70 and 0, uh, in my judgment, pound for pound, the best fighter out there. Um, until he loses, he's the best. Leave it alone. Don't even take the. All right, Larry Merchant will go to the ring now in expectation of a conversation with Fresnel. And we take a look at Harold Letterman's final card. Harold, how'd you score it? Well, Jim, I got it 118 to 110. Ten rounds to two for Everperno Whitaker. He just landed too many shots to the body. I mean, it was toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It was Anthony Jones' type of fight, but Anthony just didn't have enough snap to the punches, not a velocity. Uh, Pernell outpunched him, and that's all there was to it. No question, Pernell should win this one big. All right, Harold, let's see if the Vegas judges agreed with you as we go back to Michael Buffer for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, from Caesars Palace, we go to the scorecards. Here's the official scoring. Joseph Pasquale and Jerry Roth both have it, 120 to 108. Dave Moretti scores about 119 to 109 for the winner. And still, undisputed lightweight champion of the world, Pernell Sweepy Whitaker. And there's the expected result as the crowd begins to file out with a polite round of applause for the reigning lightweight champion of the world, first undisputed champion in that division since Roberto Duran. Final punch stat numbers in the bout, and you're going to see that Brunel Whitaker connected on 52% of his punches, but Anthony Jones at least stayed just as busy throwing 28 more punches in the bout than Whitaker, landing at a much lower rate, but as Harold Letterman said, it was a style of fight that seemed more up the alley of Anthony Jones than the consummate boxer, Pernell Whitaker. Let's go to Larry Merchant with the champ. All right, Pernell, uh, your people, the Dubas, are telling me that you broke your hand early in the fight. When did it happen? Well, well, I'm not sure if it's broken, but it's, it's rather sore right now. But uh, in the third round, you know, those shots, that's why I'm a game fighter. That's why I don't, I don't let any adversity stop me. You know, even though I did hurt my hand, I didn't complain. I just came right. back out. You've had it broken twice before. Let's take a look here. There's a punch that was on the 
on the uh, borderline and you're shaking your hand. Is that when it happened? Is I that think, your recollection? I, I, no, it was before then, but uh, once I threw that shot, I, I landed a little elbow. I think I, I hurt my hand on top of the head. But when I, I just kept using it like I've been doing. You know, it's no, it, 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 if it's hurt, you know, I still have to keep using it or, you know, I'm going to be a one-handed All right, partner. you've had that hand broken twice before. You, you should be the world's expert on whether it's broken before it gets to an x-ray machine. Do you think it's broken? I think it's fractured. You think it's fractured? <laughs> not broken. <laughs> not broken, because I, I wouldn't be able to ball it if it was broken. Well, I'm, I, I'm not sure how we're going Fractured. to separate that hair between broken and fractured. Okay, well, you know, we don't, we, I would never know until I take this glove off uh, and, uh, you know, and, and then just take a look at it. If it's, if it's well, puffed up, then we're going to get us like Why did you fight the fight you fought? Uh, you you were standing there. You wanted to fight toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Is that because you knocked the no. man out with one punch the last fight? No, Larry. Uh, it, it changed. The game plan kind of changed a little bit in there on me because I was expecting Jones either to switch, keep switching.